We're back with the news. It's been a really quiet few weeks with the run-up to Christmas. Not much has been really going on in the world of video editing or DaVinci Resolve. So I haven't made any news videos because there's not been anything really that exciting to report. But we do have a few bits and bobs right now, so I figured I'd come back this week with some news. And the first bit of news is kind of something I've mentioned before. I mentioned a few weeks back that you could now buy DaVinci Resolve Studio directly from Blackmagic for the first time, but it was limited to just a handful of countries. Well, that list has now been expanded. You've got everywhere from Germany to India to Latvia, all the way to Malta, Sweden, and of course, the good old blighty United Kingdom. Having a quick look at the prices for European countries, it's 299 euros, that's including VAT. And for the UK, that works at 270 pounds, including VAT, or 225 pounds without. Now that seems to be pretty much in line with what you'd pay pretty much everywhere else. Generally speaking, it's pretty much the same price. All of the payments do seem to be being processed via PayPal, but you don't need a PayPal account. So if you've got a PayPal account, you can use PayPal and just pay in the usual way. Or if you've got a debit or credit card, a Visa card or whatever, PayPal will actually process the payment, but you don't need to sign up. You can just do it as a guest and put in all of your card details. So who should you buy from? Honestly, however you want to, really. If you need it immediately, then obviously going through Blackmagic may be better because you can get it straight away. It's gonna be emailed to you. A lot of the resellers don't offer that facility. You have to wait for your activation code or your dongle to come in the post. Do shop around though, because if you're not in a rush, you may be able to find it a little bit cheaper. Scan.co.uk, for example, have it at 10 pounds cheaper. It's 260 quid. So if you're not bothered about getting it immediately, you might be able to save just a couple of quid by waiting those few extra days for delivery. Overall though, I think it's pretty cool news. It just means that you don't need to mess around if you want to get hold of DaVinci Resolve. With short notice, you can just buy it directly from Blackmagic. That also means that it's really beneficial for those that really struggle with postal systems in your country. Again, you don't need to mess around trying to get hold of something to be delivered. You can just buy it, have it emailed to you, and it's there ready to go. So there you go, good news indeed. YouTube news. Now I'm actually a bit late in delivering this one because it happened a week or so ago, but big news, the dislike counter has been removed from all videos on YouTube. So if you look underneath this video now, you'll see a like button with a counter, and then you'll see a dislike button, which you can still hit, but it won't tell you how many people have disliked this video. Now the reasoning of this, according to YouTube, is they ran some experiments and they found, because the count was not visible to them, we found that they were less likely to target a video's dislike button to drive up the count. In short, our experiment showed a reduction in dislike attacking behavior. So have you noticed? Have you missed them? Does it bother you? How often do you actually look for dislikes when you're looking at videos? And how often do you hit that dislike button if you see something you don't really like? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'll be interested to know all of your thoughts on it. Personally, ah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Honestly, I don't really see the point. The dislikes still show up within my YouTube studio, so they're still there, I'm still seeing them, so I don't really think it's necessarily for the protection of the creator per se. It has become a little less visible if I click on my own videos to go reply to comments. Obviously, I don't see how many dislikes are there. I have to go in the back end to actually see that number, but meh. I think the biggest hit is gonna be for people looking for tutorials, looking for how-to guides on YouTube. Because if you find a video that's got a thousand views, for example, or 10,000 views, and only a handful of dislikes, you can generally make the assumption that's a pretty reliable source, that it's a pretty good video showing you how to do something efficiently and effectively. But without those dislikes, you're not really going to know unless you go digging in to the comments. And even they can be misleading because anyone could come in and just type whatever they want. Swings and roundabouts on that one, I think, but let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. On some better news for you fellow content creators out there that are currently experimenting or testing some new search insights which they're going to put into the YouTube studio. This comes from the Creator Inside YouTube channel, which I think is worth checking out. It's sort of the guys that work for YouTube and they talk about things that are playing with, experimenting with, testing, and you get to see sort of the ideas and the rationale behind the decisions they make. I've linked that down in the description so you can go check out the channel if you want to. Basically, what they're looking to do is to add some general search statistics or analytics into the YouTube studio. So basically, you can see what your viewers are searching for. I could hop into the analytics and have a look what all of you guys are searching for on YouTube. So then I've got a better idea of the type of content that I think would appeal to you. I can make some informed decisions on what I'm gonna create 
for the channel to keep everyone happy, basically. There's also another tab on there where you can search just generally over YouTube, I can say DaVinci Resolve, and then it will show me what most people are searching for that contains the words DaVinci Resolve. And there's also a little tag on there called Content Gap, which is their way of saying this might be a good thing to target because there's not that much information on this subject, so maybe creating some videos on this would be ideal. Admittedly, this functionality does already exist in third-party applications, things like vidIQ and TubeBuddy. Now, obviously, being third-party stuff, you do have to pay for those, so it will be nice if they include that sort of analytics into YouTube Studio for free. So we'll have to wait and see if it makes it there, but hopefully it does, because I think it'll be really quite useful. Next up, we've got some more news about big YouTube channels making the switch to using black magic design, either software or hardware. And this time, it's What Culture. Now, What Culture are massive on YouTube. If you've never heard of them, they actually run a bunch of different YouTube channels. You've got the main What Culture channel, then you've got specific ones that drill down. You've got What Culture Wrestling, you've got What Culture Gaming, you've got comics, you've got all sorts. They run a whole load of different channels. Now, nearly all of their channels as well have got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. The main What Culture channel has got like two and a bit million. Their wrestling channel is one of the biggest ones on YouTube with, again, about two odd million subscribers. So they're a pretty big deal. They've actually just moved into a new studio up north in Manchester, UK, and they've kitted it out with a whole bunch of Blackmagic design hardware. I'm talking about a whole bunch of Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Pros, as well as Atom Mini Extreme ISOs. Now, what coaches Phil Chambers said, each space is specifically designed to produce a different type of video or content for one of our channels, including live streaming and podcasts. He continues, this setup allows someone to walk in, sit down, press record on the mixer. Even if someone isn't live mixing the video, every feed is recorded to one hard drive with automatically named files. In terms of content management, this is perfect. Using the Atom Mini has allowed us to decrease edit time, while a multicam setup gives us greater scope to make our content more engaging for an audience. We're even able to react to breaking news by producing a live streamed news video or podcast instantly. So there you go, another big YouTube channel is making its way over to Blackmagic Design, which just means there'll be more people taking up using DaVinci Resolve for the editing, I would guess, which is good for all of us, basically. So that's cool news. Now this information is from an article on the Blackmagic Design website within the media area. So if you want to read all of the information, jump over there. I've actually linked it down in the description below so you can read it for yourself. And that's it. That's the news for this week's folks. Hopefully something interesting happens during the week so I can be back next week with some news then as well. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time.